impact of 5G and a new generation of smart devices on supply chains. My guest is William Crockett. He is vice president of Tanaka Precious Metals. Hello, how are you doing, William? Hi, Bob. I'm doing well. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much for being with me. So um, this is a, still an emerging technology as I understand it. Uh, describe for me what is the progress of 5G as it's being rolled out to users uh, around the country, both personal and corporate. Yes, I see uh, uh, 5G here in the second half of 2021 really accelerating. Um, and I think a lot of that was kicked off by um, last year, the consumers work from home, study from home. So um, doing a lot of the video calls, bandwidth speed. And, and now I really see the, the adoption of the 5G Mm -hmm. uh, from the base stations down to the consumer. So it's very uh, aggressive this well, year's growth. Yeah, that's, that's positive. Although I keep hearing that there are different types of 5G, that there's a super 5G that is not widely available and there's something else being called 5G that isn't as powerful as the true promise of 5G. Is, is that your experience? or that, I, I'm not quite sure about that. Yeah, I'm also not quite sure about that as well. Um, I hear the same things. Um, last year, we would see the little 5G pop up on the, the icon on our cell phones, for example, AT&T, mm -hmm. but that was like 5G light, you know, right. you know what we would hear, um, as you mentioned. So there's still, um, I think, some legislation that has to go out and standards um, in the industry, but but just like yourself, Bob, I'm uh, I'm still getting up to speed on yeah. on that, both literally and figuratively. <laughs> um, right. You know, each time we get a new G, uh, it basically it seems like the advantage is simply speed. Uh, it things load up faster and the like, and that's great. But I imagine that it has greater implications for a business, for an organization, and indeed for a supply chain. So what do you see as the implications of the arrival of 5G for supply chains specifically? Yeah, see, for supply chains, um, uh, the 5G rollout is, is really important because now uh, what we see happening is everything is being connected. So the cars are now are mobile devices and, and we have to connect with, um, you know, the corporate world and also, you know, consumer um, world. So everything's being connected now. And I think that's really important um, for the supply chain uh, and, you know, decision-making of what technology to implement, uh, what's, what's the best uh, uh, technology lead times yeah, indeed, uh, it, it would seem that 5G is absolutely essential to this new generation of what we call smart devices, is it not? It is essential, yes. Yeah, and, and what type of smart devices are we talking about? What, what can they do and where can they be applied? So mainly uh, what, what I've been reading a lot, Bob, is um, the smart devices for the 5G, it's mainly the smartphones. Mm -hmm. um, it's not necessarily the, the tablets, and some of the other consumer devices. Um, it's using our smartphones to do everything. Um, right. and, and, you know, that's also, um, you know, connecting into the smart cities, into the smart homes, um, mm -hmm. our, our cars, uh, controlling, um, you know, our alarm systems at home, also at work. So I, I see mainly from a lot of the data I've been looking at is, it is smartphones is the growth mm -hmm. in the tell, 5G. Tell me more about the smart cities aspect. How exactly will this enable smart cities? And for that matter, what is a smart city uh, as you understand it? Yeah, it's really interesting one. I've been looking. Um, so I, I kind of printed out a really neat little diagram here to show, and I can you know, provide mm -hmm. this later to you. But sure. essentially the, the smart city... Um, is connecting the, the user. So let's say uh, William Crockett is out uh, riding his bike in the city. So I'm connecting to the stoplights, to other cars with my bike, um, emergency vehicles. Uh, so it's, it's connecting everything in the city. Um, I see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's using um, uh, smart city, um, not only the cars, 
um, in emergency vehicles, but getting into the data center storage, um, the uh, small cell towers, uh, parking garages. So everything is being connected. Does it raise any issues of privacy? I mean, as if privacy weren't already a, a thing of the past with current technology. Uh, right. Are there any additional concerns with 5G that, that might cause any kind of a pushback against the technology? Uh, yes, yes, I do hear some stuff. Um, and it started a few years ago, uh, looking at uh, the Department of Defense in the US um, using 5G uh, technology. And, um, and that is why we, you know, the past government put a block on the, the China supply chain um, right. for some of the, the, the 5G uh, devices and, and uh, give it an opportunity to, uh, to use the, the total solution here in, in the USA. So there is privacy. Um, it started with the government and then now coming down to the consumers. So I do see a lot of uh, surveys where, mm -hmm. where that's an issue of concern. Certainly businesses have got to be worried about that to some degree because they have a lot of proprietary information that they need to protect. I don't imagine that it's all being transmitted over, uh, over phones. Uh, so I'm not sure to what extent that is a concern, uh, but is business thinking, have to, have, does business have to think about too, or is it mostly a question of individual privacy we're talking about? Um, certainly business as well. Yeah. 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 And business has a lot of IP to, to protect um, uh, pricing structures supply chain management. So, so business uh, security is, is big. And that opens up a whole new um, market for uh, security into the 5G. Yeah. How does the current chip shortage or how will it impact the uh, rate of adoption of 5G te technology? <laughs> yeah, this is a very interesting one. And, and this is one I've really been paying attention to for the last 16 months. Um, and to summarize that, last year we were focused during COVID of consumers and workers at home and getting into the consumer devices. Now what's happening is the automotive industry shares a lot of the supply chain and components with the consumer. So the automotive chip shortage is real um, mm -hmm. here. And I talked to a lot of people and I study this. And it's, it's certainly um, an issue right now and, and a delay in, in rolling out full, you know, 5G um, uh, network from, uh, you know, the towers to the, the cell phones. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's, it's a big issue right now. So it could be a little bit slower in coming than, than we might have hoped because of this until we resolve right. the, the chip Ooh. issue. Yeah. Right, right. And, it's really interesting because you can look at some of the some of the analysts and they'll say, you know, the end of 2021 and then other guys, 2022. And what I see out there of, of a lot of um, uh, the CEOs of Qualcomm and Intel, for example, uh, they are saying, you know, this is going to extend into 2023, maybe 2024 mm -hmm. for, for mainly the, the mm -hmm. automotive um, in the industry, you know, semiconductor uh, supply chain. Yeah, interesting. So we're not it's necessarily critical, seeing a, uh, issue right now. Not necessarily seeing a completely clear path to to adoption now. Now, one of your chief concerns at Tanaka is recycling and sustainable supply chains. Uh, to what degree does this new technology uh, affect or or support initiatives to prioritize that aspect of supply chain management? Yes, this is a very interesting topic as well. Um, in, in the past. What, what was happening, uh, we, were, we were focused on incinerating and landfills. Mm -hmm. This was, you know, the, the past couple decades. So now we're into reuse and recovery. And that's where Tanaka is environmental leader in offering a full turnkey um, solution to our customer base mm -hmm. of doing recovery, refining um, of precious metals, a separation of base metals from precious metals. Sure. And then being able to put that back into the uh, supply chain. Yeah, which again is a gigantic consideration for supply chains going forward. But is there any way in which 5G, right. in the topic of our discussion today, obviously that 5G can help or is it, is it, a, is it, a, is it an issue that uh, it aids in any way or, or smart devices for that matter, e aid in any way in this, uh, in this attempt to promote recycling and reuse? 
Right. It does. It does help in the five G um, more on the front end manufacturing with mm-hmm. with the wafer foundries. Um, so making the semiconductor chip in the GAN technologies and the in the gas uh, technologies and the SIC. These are these are high bandwidth, high frequency um, silicon nodes that are used for the five G network. So. Mm-hmm. What we can do is we can do a lot of the um, uh, recovery of the precious metals and metals used in this process. Um, and even inside the equipment that's used, uh, we, can, we can recover that and uh, uh, put that back into uh, the supply chain. So help sustainability. And it's very important for, uh, for customers to have a, a US-based full turnkey um, recycling right. solution for them. Mm-hmm. So, so it's very important in, in the 5G, maybe not so much in the end of the, the chipsets, but more during the manufacturing of the chips. You know, again, we are barely at the point and not certainly not at the point of full adoption and distribution of 5G technology, but already certain people are thinking about the next one, the next G, 6G. Is that on the horizon? <laughs> I mean, is that can you get your brain around what that would mean to supply chains or is that a discussion for another day? Um, no, just um, it's another study topic um, that I've been watching here and mm-hmm. 6G collaboration is happening um, behind the scenes. And, and you can look at some of the, the news press releases. Uh, example of this is um, a U.S. Uh, commercial partnership between Global Foundries and Raytheon. So Raytheon has a special uh, you know, GAN technology, high band gap, mm-hmm. uh, high frequency. So Global Foundries traditionally was, um, you know, spin off from IBM and making, um, uh, you know, logic, different types of chipsets, not so much into the, the high frequency, um, you know, 5G. So this is a really big um, licensing of the gallium nitride technology. And it's for the 6G wireless infrastructure build out that's starting in the design stage now. So they're starting to look at chipsets mm-hmm. for the, the cell towers in the 6G and then- Interesting. We're working that back towards the, you know, the consumer. Well, that'll be something <laughs> exciting to deal with as soon as we've got 5G taken care of. But that's it. It's... One, one G at a time, perhaps we should right. say. Uh, right. William Crockett of Tanaka Precious Metals, I want to thank you so much for joining me today to talk about this, uh, this oh, important certainly. technology and giving us some insight into where it's going. Thanks very much for your time. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Bob. Take care. Have a great day. You too.